So the game's done, it's finished. We've really spent a lot of time. It took us over four and a half years to accomplish this game. We're really happy today with the results that we got on Lone the Dark. We wanted all the players to be able to finish the game. So for example, if you're stuck in a certain situation, you'll be able to, uh, with the DVD chapter select menu, to be able to advance and move forward uh, into the game, whether it be in simple parts, uh, small checkpoints, or even to different sections of uh, the episodes themselves. Uh, and this freedom, we wanted to offer it because we didn't want the player to be so frustrated, throw his pad away, he's invested I don't know how many dollars into the, the product, and why should he be um, uh, refused to be able to see the end of the game? The ending itself, you'll be able to only see it only once you've accomplished a certain amount of the game itself. The idea is that if you advance, you'll just have the basic elements to be able to help you out in this next situation. So you'll be able to lose your progression in some sense about what you've collected in your environment. And for those who really started the game from beginning to end, they will really have the full game experience, the whole progression of the game, as well as have access to all the achievements. What I'm most proud of is the, the way we managed to do the interaction with your environment. So the idea is that you can react really instinctively and really collect everything around in your environment to be able to combine the objects together to create really cool weapons. Um, just with, for example, with a simple lighter and a healing spray, you can create an incredible flamethrower. So just all that, different possibilities that really create emergent gameplay, that's really what I'm proud of. So the story, you have one way to, to, to complete it. But at the same time, we wanted to have the uh, free roaming aspect of the uh, Central Park. You start up very linear and then progressively it opens up to more and more freedom and exploration to the park. What's important to note is that every given situation, there is not one way to complete it. For example, you have to pass the enemies, but you can either pass them by driving, smashing through them, you can pass them by going to face-to-face -face combat, you can pass them by creating bombs. That's the experience that you're going to get that's really unique. It's the way that how you, as a player, will face the situation and how you want to play the game. Well, I think our idea was really to bring a lot of innovation in the game. But of course, there are some things that work and we, we use them. You have the possibility to switch to from third person view to first person view. And the first person view, it's really how you, you would play as a first person shooter. So in, in some sense, players will not be completely lost uh, in terms of their bearings when playing this game. There is some horror elements in the game, but that's not the key feature of the game. It's really part of the experience that you're going to live. And so in terms of the horror, it's not about like surprising players and like gore splashing all over the place. It's more about uh, suggested fear, more about building the tension up until you arrive to that door and you're just scared because you don't know what's going to happen straight afterward. I think the coolest thing is uh, the players telling himself, wow, I can do that in this game. I can interact this way with my environment. I can put fire in, in everywhere I think of it. I can uh, live an incredible ex adventure. It's discovering the new possibilities uh, that the player has that I think is really cool. The game's coming on 360 PC, Wii and PS2 on June 24th in the US. PS3 following out later on this year.